let us discuss the true basis for classification of lattices. In a previous video, we saw that although often lattices are defined in terms of the relation between lattice parameters like a equal b equal c and alpha equal beta equal gamma 90 degrees for cubic system, these cannot really be taken as definitions. So then what is the true basis for classification of lattices into these seven crystal systems and subsequently into 14 Bravais lattices? This basis is symmetry. So in this video, we will give you a brief introduction of this concept of symmetry. What is symmetry? We can give a general definition of symmetry applicable to um, geometrical objects and crystallography that if an object is brought into self coincidence after some operation, it is said to possess symmetry with respect to that operation. By operation, we mean some geometrical operation like translation, rotation, reflection, etc. So, translation is the first operation which we should consider. Lattice translation, the definition is important here, lattice translation. A vector from one lattice point to another lattice point is called lattice translation, like the vector shown here, going from one lattice point to another lattice point. And we say that a lattice is symmetric with respect to all lattice translation. What we mean by that is if we translate all lattice points by identical translations, we bring lattice into self coincidence because every lattice point which moves actually coincides with another point, another lattice point. So the whole lattice point come into self coincidence with pre existing lattice point. So lattice comes into self coincidence with the lattice. So that is one symmetry, one required symmetry of lattice. We call it the defining symmetry of the lattice. This is how lattice can be defined. We can say a lattice is a set of points having translational symmetry. Apart from translational symmetry, however, lattice can have other kinds of symmetry. And one of the important symmetry in this class of other kinds of symmetry is a rotation axis. A rotation axis is characterized by its fold. We define a rotation axis as an n-fold rotation axis if, it's, if the smallest non-zero rotation angle is given by 360 degree by n. This is the rotation. Um, since it is a symmetry rotation we are talking about, this rotation should bring the lattice into self coincidence. Of course, this is true. This definition is true for finite objects also and not only for lattices. So let us look at some examples of finite objects possessing different kinds of rotational symmetry. Let's look at a rectangle. This rectangle, if I rotate by 90 degree, you can see 90 degree, then it will go from this horizontal position to a vertical position. That's not self coincidence. But if I rotate it by 180 degree about its center, it will be bring itself into self coincidence. So that the minimum rotation angle which will bring it into self coincidence is 180 degree, so which means n is equal to 2 in the above equation. So we will call the symmetry axis of this rectangle as a two-fold rotation axis. We will say that a rectangle possesses a two-fold rotation axis passing through its center. This is a symbol for a two-fold rotation axis, a small lens-shaped object. If we apply the same concept or same principle to this square, you can see, convince yourself, 
that the minimum rotation angle which will bring it into self coincidence is 90 degree that means n is equal to 4 in the above equation so we will say a square possesses a four fold rotation axis and the symbol for such an axis is a small square so we can have a finite object can have different kinds of rotational axes and here i am showing you a collection of objects having different rotation axes different kinds of rotation axes rotation axes of different folds different values of n so this english letter z has a two fold axis because it will come into self coincidence by 180 degree rotation the symbol the next symbol is a three fold rotation axis 120 degree rotation three fold axis the symbol swastika if drawn nicely and symmetrically will have a four fold axis and so on if we assume this flower petal or the snowflake to be ideal and symmetric they will have five fold and six fold axes and this nice computer graphics in the end is having eight fold symmetry axis now a beautiful theorem a very very interesting theorem the proof of which we will look at in a different video not here but here i am simply stating it that only possible rotation axis of symmetry for crystals is one fold two fold three fold four fold then five is missing we jump to six fold and then there is a full stop no higher symmetry axis seven eight nine and so on is possible in the crystal so for crystal only the symmetry is restricted that's why the phrase restriction crystallographic restriction theorem this is called that the crystal crystallographic symmetries rotational symmetry for crystal is restricted only to one two three four and six fold rotation axes now if we look at the lattices we have we can now see that lattices can have variety of symmetry they, we have already seen that it has translational symmetry by lattice translations it has rotational it, it may or may not have rotational symmetry this is a square lattice so it has rotational symmetry of four fold axis passing through the center of these squares unit cell squares but it has even more symmetry passing through middle of any two nearest lattice point the midpoint of any two nearest lattice point is actually a two fold rotation axis so that's also part of the symmetry of this lattice so a square lattice which is four fold as well as two fold axes and then uh, one more kind of symmetry which is important in describing lattices in crystal is the reflection symmetry called the bilateral symmetry and here the reflection symmetry you can see is in these lines acting as mirror lines the horizontal line and the vertical line passing midway between the lattice points or these diagonal lines passing through the lattice points at 45 degrees to the original lines so all these lines act like a mirror symmetry lines for this square lattice so you can see that a given lattice produces a variety of rotational reflection and translational symmetry so that's where the concept of group comes that all symmetry operations of a lattice form group and we we have two kinds of symmetry groups for a lattice or for a crystal and they are called point group and space group we will discuss first the point group in the point group we ignore translational symmetry although translational symmetry is as we said is the required symmetry definitional symmetry of the crystal but for the moment we ignore that required symmetry 
and we focus on what additional symmetry beyond that required symmetry the crystal is possessing and that is called the point group symmetry so obviously since we are ignoring translations the point group includes only rotations and reflections so and why do they why do we call them point group because rotations and reflections will leave at least some point unchanged rotation leaves the rotation axis point on the rotation axis invariant reflection leaves all the points on the mirror plane or the mirror line in this 2d example uh, as invariant points they don't go anywhere during the operation so since some points are left invariant by the operation of the symmetry in the, uh, this kind of uh, symmetry operations these symmetry operations form a group that is called point group the other symmet other group which we are concerned with is called the space group remember in defining point group we left out the translations now we include them in a space group we include all symmetry operations rotations reflections as well as translations so a space group really is the group of all symmetry operations of a lattice so we can think of point group operations plus translations forming the space group so we have point group and we have a space group and the lattices will be classified on the basis of these two symmetry groups this we take up in the next video thank you